I've doubled my mileage. But have I joined the dark side? You are my brother, Anakin! We've doubled our mileage, mainly because I'm trying to compete with the 1500 boys running 330 and below. And <coughs> now I'm... Hello, brother. <coughs> now I'm trying to get serious with this stuff. And we're up to roughly 60 mile a week or 100k a week. And we're going to see how the difference is because it sounds crazy trying to roll the dice in the Olympic year. But I found that I can't compete with the main guys and recover as quickly. In a diamond league, it's fine. But anything above that when I'm trying to do back to back is pretty tough. So this is Seb's breakfast. His apples after his breakfast. This isn't mine, by the way. But yeah, no, nevertheless, we've doubled our mileage. There's a ton of reasons for it. We're going to go into that now. So zone training is great and there's a huge thing around it at the moment but we have to be mindful that zone training is very specific and is normally used by elite athletes because when you're training at such a high level you can't overexert yourself because then you can't come back the following day or later in that day and i'm seeing a lot of people saying oh i'm only training in zone one or zone two or zone three or whatever it may be but the reality is that the elites can do that because they run such a high amount of volume or they take part in such a high amount of volume that they have to zone their training whereas if you're running 30 mile a week and if you're running 100 mile a week the 30 mile a week doesn't really need to be thinking about the zone training too much because they should be focusing on quality. So let's find where we can sort of try and avoid blaring those lines if you like, because it's a slippery slope if you want to see improvements and the zone training is great. Yes, you should keep your heart rate in a certain level. Yes, your lactate should be in a certain level. However, we have to be mindful that zone training is really tailored for the elites where it matters most. If you're doing low mileage, focus on your quality if you want to see jumps. All right, coffee's done, we're short on time. Let's go and get change, but let's talk about junk mileage. You know, it's funny, I used to think that junk mileage was just a waste of time. I'm starting to see junk mileage as, I, I need to stop coining it junk mileage, but I'm sort of seeing it now as just conditioning for your body, because before I thought, oh, I can just get more at cross training. Now I'm seeing it as, it's just teach my body how to react and respond to the actual running in your legs. So just allowing your body to learn how to recover quicker um, and do all the small things um, in and around running. What are you getting on your Nike, Sebby? Are you all Nike'd out? Are you got in your Nike tracksuit, have you? We found out that this little boy is an absolute bruiser. He's ripped off, in the last week, he's ripped off two kitchen cupboards. Now he's whacking his head. He's just ripped off the, st the stair gate this morning. He's one years old, he's running and sprinting everywhere and he's at the point where everything is just a toy. So whether it's slapping his mum's forehead like he did the other day with the loudest wallop or ripping things down, he's out to get you. You out to get people, Sebi? <laughs> yeah. Right, we'll head to the track. Today we have Tempo. Um, and then some 200s. So one of the hardest things I've definitely found was running the extra mileage and keeping the legs quick. It's actually quite a fine balance because I'm so heavy legged, it's hard to keep the, the speed in. So uh, the reason why we've decided to up our mileage is mainly because, I, it sounds crazy, but I actually think my coach has got us so good at cross training that my aerobic capacity is better than what my tendons and my muscles can handle. So long story short, my heart rate doesn't really increase when I'm training. Um, it does increase, but not massively. Um, and what's fatiguing is my muscles and I just feel lots of aches and pains everywhere in my lower limbs. Um, so that's why we've decided if we can try and condition them a little bit more with strength work and more running. So that's the theory behind it, because there is there is a line that you cross. And I do believe that because we used to hit the cross training so, so hard, I then was never conditioned to run. So you almost don't want to be too good at cross training because you want to let the running do the work and if you do too much cross training then when it comes to running you just can't yeah you break down like i do and i get sort of anywhere from six to ten weeks normally six to eight weeks and i break down whereas we're on a good run at the moment we are on a good run um touch words yeah you've got we've got to be realistic here i don't think anybody's ever made a world final i'll say mile a week 25 mile a week so me saying oh i do low mileage yeah it looks good on paper but we know what works, the science is there and it suggests that you have to be running mileage. A 30 mile a week or 50k a week, tire rats every in the back, it just isn't enough. So we have to be a bit more realistic and understand that we need the conditioning to be ready for the rounds. And it's all good running one diamond league race, but the reality is I need to be able to run a heat, a semi, a final, all within sort of five days. So that's the theory and we're rolling the dice on Olympia, which is a gamble, but I think it will pay off. I think what's interesting as well is my coach's philosophy is very like, it's not set in stone, he's, he's willing to learn with the athlete. As long as we hit the key sessions that he has in mind and that we plan months ahead, as long as we hit those, he's happy to go around us, which is why he's allowed me to do a lot of cross training up until this point. 
but I think we have recognized that the mileage is needed as long as we can keep an element of the quality and quantity combined and if my body can handle it that's the caveat is if my body can handle it and it is at the moment because I hit 60 at 65 over the last two weeks i think i'm on for about 60 something six high 60 this week so i have a theory that if i can get to six to eight weeks then it's become a routine it's, it's no longer like a task or a chore it's just something that i'm going to do every week and my body will be able to handle it because your tendons take a lot longer than your muscles do to adapt so we'll see if that philosophy comes out and in six weeks time let's see if i've been able to bank 60 miles a week for that period oh it's like wallpaper paste it's it's good but it is like wallpaper paste finding these two little gremlins they've found their way to the water jump is that what it's called a water jump hurdle water hurdle hi you cheeky little monkeys what did you find erin a spider a spider you're not gonna get me <laughs> Daddy? I don't want to. Today was 4.55, 4.55, 4.51, 4.50, but in Invincibles. So if you were the trainers, you know, it's worth quite a few seconds when you compare it to thick, chunky versus carbon. But yeah, the load in your legs makes it so much harder to run this kind of stuff. It was so comfortable, but it's just like it catches you quicker because you have less working with you than the kids on the run. <laughs> Who's coming with Daddy on his run? Are you coming? Me. You're gonna come. Are you gonna be on the bike? Yeah. Yeah. Should we get your car? Are you coming, Toby? No. Yeah. No. Right, Miley, are you coming as well? No. Yeah, we're gonna go with all of us. Yeah, all of us, Erin. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Oh, Miley, you're gonna love this, aren't you? Come on, this way. Okay, let's go and get this. Oh, is your head grown? I think your head's grown quite a lot. Grown more I, than that. I, I, oh, you've got a big girl head now, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. I, this one is a big girl helmet. It is. <laughs> it is a big girl helmet. You're right. Shake out with the gang today. You gonna join me for a little run, Zabby? Yeah. Erin, are we going for a little shake out? Erin, can you do thumbs no. up? We do thumbs up. There we go. <laughs> that run was a bit of a disaster. Meg, to be fair, Meg didn't realise, but Meg bolted off. So normally Milo runs about here, but he spent the first sort of half a mile just trying to sprint down the hill, pulling me on my back spit at the moment. Evening run, and this pup hates coming out with me for the shake out. Look at him, he's running away. Milo, come here. Sorry, mate, we've got to. You need a walk. I know your breed isn't supposed to do this, but we are. Excuse the mess. All right, come on, Miley. We're going for a little shake out. And let's talk shoes. I want to note that your shoes play a much bigger role than you could imagine. Your footwear, I think the footwear has actually played a big role in actually me up in my mileage because think of that as the suspension to cushion in the blow on your tendons, etc. yada, yada. But huge role. And this little guy does not want to come. Come on, Milo. Come on. Don't dig your heels in. Let's go. It's not that bad. Come on. Right, let's get running. 
So if you footwear, a major player in keeping you in one piece. I think it's easy to forget how much of a difference it makes. Oh, I love I use Pegasus pedals for my easy runs, shake outs. So anything longer than three mile in bits was they're my absolute goal to yeah like running on clouds. My little lane you have come back. You've just been to the loo. Now let's start running again. Good. Right, let's get going again. Yeah, so I use the Invincibles for all of the longer stuff and it's like running on a cloud. It just really does dampen the bow. It makes a huge difference. And I think overall, the shoe choice just allows you to run more. Think of it like an F1 car. The same way you have hard stuff and medium tires. Same way you change your spikes. It should be the same way you change your footwear because we have a lot of different uses. And I think there was an old school of thought where we all just kind of wore whatever felt fastest, but now that you should be wearing what serves the purpose. So your bigger, bulkier shoes for your longer, harder runs and your stiffer and more carbon based running quicker. And now we're in the carbon era. We just have to be careful with that you are still wearing an element of non carbon because it's so important to get the conditioning in your feet. Just think about how your feet respond to conditioning. So, an easy way would potentially be to walk around the house barefoot all the time, but we have to be realistic that we need that conditioning in flight as well. You just have to get as much as you can for as little impact and stress on the body. And the most impressive thing here is people say frantic can't run. They bloody can, as long as the temperature's not hot. And I think one of the important things to note is that I say that I'm up to 65 miles a week last week, 61 the week before and 60, or 64 the week before and 61 the week before that. It's that 15 mile of that, of that 60 is at sort of 7.30s and then a lot of it is warm up. All I've done really is swap out my 40 minute cross trains for a sort of 25 minute jog, uh, 21 minute jog, sorry. So I'm doing a lot less time training. My heart rate is remaining a lot lower in general across the board because I've trained quite hard, but I murdered myself. So it'll be fascinating to see how my body reacts because I feel like I'm building a bigger base to have a higher peak, if that makes any sense. I feel like I'm laying a stronger foundation to be able to climb high in the middle of that track season because normally I get so six to 10 meters in and I'm pooped. So it'll be fascinating to see how rolling the dice during the most important year. But let's be honest, if I don't roll the dice, I'm not gonna be competitive. I'm not here to make up the numbers. No way in hell. I'm here to be a contender. So if I'm stepping up to the 15, I'm contending. You can be damn sure about that.